Hello and welcome to the Back Nine Report. My name is Carlos Torres and along with Fred Vader, we check in on the world of golf to bring you the latest news, insights, analysis, interviews, recaps, previews. Hey, we cover anything and everything golf. In other words, if it happened in golf, we have it for you. Fred, hi, how are you today? Hey, Carlos, I'm great. Hey, uh, the LPGA Tour wrapped up a week or so ago. The Champions Tour got done. Uh, everybody's working on their 2022 season right now with the, you know, and, and but we got a we got a big tournament this week. We Well, I don't know if it's a big tournament, but we got a tournament, right? We got some top names there. The uh, the Hero World Challenge, Tiger's little deal there in the Bahamas. We're going to talk about that a little bit, right? Well, it's time for a trip to the Bahamas, right? The, the biggest stars in the game are already there in Albany for the celebration of well, they're there for some vacation. Or they're they're there to play golf, really. But they're, they're there, there to collect, get a check. They're there to get a check. But it's the Tiger Woods Hero World Challenge. Uh, took a year off last year because of the COVID nineteen pandemic, but returns with an enormous amount of uh, you may ask uh, good players or great news. We have to talk about the biggest news, okay? Because Tiger Woods is there all week, and we saw him. Uh, for the first time walking out of any video that him or anybody have taught, uh, taken about him. And of course, he had to face the press. He has to face the questions. He didn't talk much about what happened during the, the crash, which a lot of people wanted. So what were you feeling? What happened there? He directed everybody to, hey, there's a report published. If you want to know what happened, just go there. That's where you're going to find the news on that. Now, if you want to talk about me and all that, that's where he opened up. And what he opened up about was like he, something that I think we expected to happen, but we were maybe some of us were in denial that was going to happen. And is that Tiger Woods, as we knew it, the era is gone. It's not going to happen anymore. He is, he has come to realize that he's never going to be the same. And he is going to be playing a select amount of tournaments moving forward, kind of like Ben Hogan did after the crash. So he's going to pick and choose where he's going to be playing. And he's saying, hey, I feel good. I don't have to play against the top players to have a great life. He's thankful that he was out of that hospital with his two limbs, okay, his two legs. He was about to lose one. He was about to have a lot more than that. He could have been dead in that crash. So he's thankful. It seems like, hey, he has come to realize that there's so much more to life than just playing golf and trying to be the best golfer ever. So that tells us something for, okay, so for, for once, we know he's not going to catch Jack Nicholas. Jack Nicholas' record is not going to be touched, at least by him. That we know that much. Uh, that we're going to see Tiger Woods again dominating tournaments and all that, it's not going to happen. Uh, where where does it stand? I mean, I, I'm going to give you my take on that, but before we go on into the Hero World uh, Challenge, we have to talk about what do we think is going to happen with Tiger moving forward. And also, this is the opportunity right now, The P, not the opportunity, but it's the cue for the PGA Tour to Hey, we got to find somebody now that's going to have to be the face of golf. Who's that going to be? That's a that's a really good question. That's a that's a question for a whole nother show. But uh, yeah, I I watched the whole uh, the whole press conference, uh, and uh, it was it was enlightening. Um, Tiger was uh, pretty forthcoming, really. Like you said, he would not talk about the crash. That's the report. You want to know about it? Read the report. I'm not talking about that. You want to talk about this stuff? I'll talk about this. And he was pretty engaging, really. Um, so like you say, he's not ready to say at this point, he's, you know, to be able to get back to where he could play PGA Tour golf, he's a long ways from that. They tried to question him, you know, is there a target date that you've set? You know, how about playing at Augusta? How about playing in the at the Open Championship at St. Andrews, which it's there this year? And he said, I would love to be there. I'd love to play in it. But, you know, my leg is nowhere near ready to do something like that. Can you imagine walking the practice rounds and then walking the tournament and putting all that torque and pressure on that leg? 
you know, I mean, he made the comment he was in pain just sitting in the chair in his leg and his back, just sitting there talking to the press. Now, I watched him. I specifically watched when it was over and he got up out of his chair. He walked off the podium and down, you know, as long as the cameras followed him. He seemed to move pretty well. So I, you know, there was a, a little bit of a limp, but not that much. So I, I was pretty uh, encouraged from that. So you asked me to say what I think is going to happen, Carlos. What I think is going to happen is sometime later in 2022, he's going to start shooting uh, 65, uh, 68 around the Bears Club down there, wherever he's playing down there in Jupiter. And he's going to start making some money off the boys in the games. And he's going to say, you know what? I could take this out on tour. Now, playing with your buddies for a couple hundred bucks is a lot different than playing in a PGA Tour event. He saw We saw him when he came back in 2019, how long it took, or 2018, how long it took him to get back to where he was ready. And he said, you know, it, the light didn't really go off until Tampa. And he saw that he could compete. And then another tournament, he was up to, and the PGA, he was up near the top. And the Open Championship, he was up near the top. And he knew he could compete. That's when that's when the light and confidence came and all the work he'd been putting in. But that, that took over a year, Carlos. So the other point that he made, one of the takeaways is that he's not sure if he wants to dedicate that much time and effort to get back to that place. So that to me, that's that's exactly what he's done this 10 times. He's had five knee surgeries. He has had five back surgeries. Does he want to go through all this again? And he made the statement. He said, this is different. This is a lot harder. Uh, he was talking about during his workouts, he has to break the scar tissue. Do you know how painful that is? You know, it's hard. It's really, really hard. You want to say something? Go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. Oh, I, I okay. just thought that you were going to like stop. and. <laughs> oh, no, I'm sorry. Well, I just want to, I, my, my, uh, real quick, my takeaways from his press conference, real quick. Um, he, like you said, he's just glad to be alive and not have his leg amputated. In his words, I quote, amputation was on the table. So it was, it was imminent. It was discussed. He was flat on his back in bed for three months. He was excited when he could finally go outside in a wheelchair just to see the sun. Uh, one of the lighter comments he made was about uh, uh, the time he could start moving around in crutches in his house. And he said, you know, I knew I built a big house, but I actually had to stop and take rest when he was walking to the kitchen or whatever, because the house is so big when he was on crutches. Um, he understands the rehab process. He knows what it, it's all about. He's done, been through this 10 times, but since his right leg was completely crushed, in that car crash in February, this is a whole different rehab. It's it's a lot more involved. I, he made a great comment. I love this. Uh, he loves the idea of playing it forward. He says, man, he says, the ball's falling out of the air a lot faster than it used to for me. He said, I can play a short course if the PGA Tour wanted to get back to 6,000 or 6,500 yards. He said, I could play that, but I can't play over 7,000 yards. There's no way right now. Um, there's no target date or tournament for a return. Um, uh, he would have to go through a lot of stuff and have some miraculous recoveries to even think about that. As I mentioned, he's not even sure if he really wants to do that. Uh, his quote on that was don't foresee the leg ever being what it used to be. The clock is ticking. I'm getting older. I'm just trying to be the cool dad to Sam and Charlie. And he is enjoying spending the time with his family now. You know, he can get around. He's working more closely with the Woods Foundation. The foundation turns 25 years old this year, and they've helped over 2 million kids. And he's taking a more active role in that right now. Uh, Tiger did say he would love to play at Augusta, love to play at St. Andrews. But at the present, just too many unknowns. Um, as you mentioned, he did say there might be a time where maybe he could play in five, six events a year, similar to what Ben Helga did after his car accident. Um, he said one of the things he really loves and misses is uh, going to the uh, like the Masters and the Open Championship and being at the Champions Dinner. 
He said, sitting and talking with the older players, uh, he said, is so much fun. He enjoys that so much that he really wants to do that. Uh, he was asked about what value can he bring to the tour now that maybe he's not going to be playing and that kind of thing. He said, well, he hosts two tournaments, the Genesis and the Hero World Challenge. Uh, he said he's always going to be around to give advice to players. He's talking to players all the time. Um, and you mentioned, you know, would he do, consider the PGL? And he said, nope. He said, I'm committed to the PGA Tour. That's where my legacy is. Um, so my final comment here, Carlos, for you. Um, he sustained life-threatening and severe injuries in that crash. He's lucky to be alive, not to have his right leg amputated. He seemed to be in a good place mentally, but he appeared he was telling us that he probably won't be playing any PGA Tour events in the near future or possibly ever again. I wouldn't, like Justin Thomas said, I wouldn't doubt him. I think he's going to play again. The question is when. I totally think by looking at him like he was in that press conference and any other videos that we have seen from him uh, there at, uh, in, bah in the Bahamas, is like, okay, he, he can walk. He can walk. I, I expect him to be on the dinner, champion's dinner for, for the for Augusta. I'm not expecting him to play. Uh, cool thing that you can have with him there in Augusta, maybe make him one of the honorary uh, tee shot uh, starters members, right? Uh, you can have him there with Jack and whoever else you're going to put there. I don't um, think Tiger. I don't think Tiger's ready for that. I don't think he will go. It's for just that a tee shot. Year. It's just a tee shot. I don't so, think he'll do that. Well, I don't know, but I, 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 if 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 there would be marketing and savvy like they are they they would think about that that would be just a way to get him in augusta somehow and that would be just the press would be just okay let's let's see his swing and you will see that everybody will be dissecting everything that he did to see if he's in shape or not for that uh the open i wouldn't rule it out uh and here's what i think he's doing and, and you got to give it to him I, I definitely i don't expect him to have a full schedule anymore um maybe four or five tournaments, yes. Majors, one or two WGCs, I don't know, big tournaments. Or his tournaments, the ones that he hosts. Those could be the ones that he can also play. Uh, but I think that what you put into your mind is also, look, I'm not going to put myself, we see his, he's tired of all this, going through everything that he's done. Now it's time, of course, he sees his age, He's not going to be a young guy anymore. He's not getting any younger. But if he can take any advice from somebody, it's Casey Martin. Okay? I know it's a different story. It's a disease that he had, ended up amputating the leg. But he can see that he could do it. If Casey Martin did it with that debilitating uh, disease that he had, you know, you can do it too. You know, at the end of the day, it's different stories. Uh, both of them are really, really tough, but it just comes to mind. Think about that. I mean, you can you can do it for one tournament here. You don't have to be all the time. Uh, you know, Ken, Ken Green came back from amputation and with a prosthetic and played as well. So it can be done. Hey, there, there is a lot of, I mean, technology is so different right now. I mean, it keeps evolving. You never know and whatever you know, the, the things that he has right there in his leg right now, uh, I know it's different. This, this is unheard of. It's uncharted territory. But maybe once it starts, once he gets that first tournament in, okay, because uh, I know you, you can't just put yourself right now in your mindset, like, I'm going to be even playing any other tournament. But you start slowly and slowly and slowly, and it'll build up. I mean, he has done this for so long that you cannot tell me, even the biggest one, the big, the biggest, and I know he's the rarest of, our, of athletes, but even the biggest stars, Michael Jordan, any, uh, any other of the big uh, stars in sports, when they retire and they come to, yes, I, I'm not going to do it anymore. It starts when you get home and you're not doing anything else. And you see everybody else doing it. And now I'm sure that he's there and he might be feeling the itch. Man, I wish I could play. I know I can't. I know I can't. I'm not going to. But it's going to be itching. And that itch is going to get even worse 
as the time goes by and you start sharing with the people and all that. But anyway, I wouldn't rule it out. Uh, I, what I'm not going to expect is maybe another win, but I will definitely see him. Maybe I think we're going to see him. Uh, I don't know, maybe in St. Andrews. That's my my take. But uh, we'll see. We'll see. Definitely we'll see him any, uh, again. Now we know that he, he's walking. And that's the best thing. The best news in this, he's alive, has both legs, and he's walking, and he's there for her, for his children. And that's the best that he can have. But anyway, what he has right now is the 2021 Hero World Challenge, which has a purse set for $3.5 million, and the winner is going to take $1 million, uh, not the standard 18% payout according to the PGA Tourist Prize Money Distribution chart. But that field is a 20-man field. Of course, it's always limited, but it's fielded by the, the, some of the world's best. Uh, Justin Thomas, Jordan Speed, Rory McIlroy, Bruce Skepka, Colin Morikawa uh, are there, and more of them are going to be there. Uh, like I said, it's an invitational event, this 20-player uh, field, with the players required to be in the top 50 of the official world golf ranking. A cut is not made after 36 holes, so every one of them in the field is allowed to play all 72 holes. All players who finish four rounds of the tournament will earn money. The event is played this year at the Albany Golf Club in Bahamas, Fred. It's the ninth PGA Tour sanctioned event of the 2021-2022 PGA Tour schedule. Can you believe that? Nine events already. Almost so for, 25% how, of almost 25% through the year. We're almost done, man. It's uh, wow, I can't believe it. But anyway, how about that? I mean, beyond the money, there are important points, perks, and benefits on the line for the field, in particular for the for the tournament winner. Uh, it does not get FedEx Cup points, but it does give you 48 official world golf uh, ranking points with the points available based on field strength. And this strength is unbelievable. So how about this tournament? I uh, just got two things for you, Carlos. Uh, number one, John Rahm is not there. So if Colin Morikawa would happen to win because of the strength of the field and those world ranking points, he would go to number one. So uh, that's a big deal. So you want to watch for that. And then betting favorites this week, Carlos, Roy McIlroy, eight to one, Colin Morikawa, nine to one, Justin Thomas, 10 to one, Victor Hovland, 11 to one. There's your favorites right there. Yeah, I think Colin Morikawa, you're going to have to take into account. I mean, uh, uh, to me, my favorite to win here is Roy McIlroy. I think he he's just set for this course and the way that he uh, and he's playing. been playing really well. He's been playing really well, playing really well, and I think he, he's the guy to beat. But I, I think my second guy to pick here is your guy, Colin Morikawa. I mean, the story would be amazing. He would become the second fastest ever in history to get to number one. Who was the, the fastest? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Tiger, Tiger Woods? The, the guy? Tiger? Yeah, I think it was. But anyway, we know. And he stayed that, there for a long time, too. Hey, but he was the fastest, and Colin would be the second if he wins here. And let me tell you, his last start, we already documented it, ended up with a new hardware for his trophy case and a new, and making history. He's the history maker. So, hey. I wouldn't be surprised if he wins and becomes. You think the world Colin? Leader. You think Colin Morikawa could outdo Rory two in a row? He just outdid him in Dubai. He did it. It's a different circumstance, but the problem with Colin—I mean, not with Colin, with Rory—is up here, okay? and that's what what outdid him. It wasn't. I mean, I'm not going to take away from Colin. He played consistent, and that's what he does. But that's what you can expect. Colin's going to be all the way here with you have Rory going up, 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 then there will be at some point, he'll have a downtime and hey, that's when he can undo himself. But uh, I, I still think Rory will be the one to 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 catch, but I wouldn't be surprised if your guy, Colin Morgawa, wins and makes history again, second fastest to world number one. Anyway, great tournament, great story here with Tiger Woods seeing him again. We're glad he's alive and uh, we're glad to see him again. But his tournament is going to be very interesting with 20 of the best in the world of golf right now, Fred. Any final words? No, uh, I'll probably be watching a little bit. Uh, I always like watching that. It's a great looking place down there. I'd love to go down there sometime. 
Most definitely. And hey, thank you for joining us. It's always our pleasure to bring you the latest in golf news and information. Remember to subscribe to our channel so you can keep up to date with all these videos that we make for you with anything and everything golf. Thank you for joining us.